We are uh, we are starting the show. We are laughing already. It is uh, a Friday afternoon. That is exactly uh, how you kind of take the week out on Super Bowl week. Brandon Boykin and Justin Simon here for Fanzio. Uh, we've been having a good time all week with the Super Bowl. You know, Brandon, I think that what's interesting is it feels like a low-key Super Bowl. And you'll notice, by the way, I've not worn this since week three or four. Uh, I have been uh, I have been putting my Eagles stuff aside, trying to be you know we we were dressing better, but it's a Friday and I figure the last game of the season I still have to support my team. So uh, at Fanzio, what we do is connect you with your favorite athletes and your favorite teams, and and the Eagles are still going to be my favorite team even if you know we're awful for the next six or seven years. Which, judging by some of their recent decisions, they're going to be. But let's let's stop that for a second. It has been a quiet Super Bowl week. Uh, there have not been any great, right? right? Well, in, <laughs> it, it, yeah, I mean, outside of, outside of Cam Newton and Peyton Manning, nobody said anything. Nobody's done anything. Uh, we'll get to Johnny Menzel in a bit cause that's its own story, but it, it's been kind of a, I, I don't know if it's cause the Pro Bowl was so bad that it kind of took the air out of the NFL for a little bit. And, and it'll ramp back up this weekend. But usually there's so much hype, so much going on. And, and look, of course, ESPN and the NFL Network have done 72,000 hours of coverage and what have you. But it, it's feel quiet this week, hasn't it? Yeah, and you know what it is? Um, I think they're trying to not beat the dead horse about the race thing because it's been pretty much beaten to death. And everyone is now so cognizant and aware of pretty much how racist they really look with right. a lot of this stuff because it's like, dude, you're calling him out for doing the same stuff that Brady and Gronk and Aaron Rodgers are doing. And because, you know, I get it. He's the cocky black guy. And right. no, nobody wants to, nobody really wants to applaud that dude. And but why he, not? Like why, why can't, you know, he, he be as cocky as he is good. Right. It's one thing when you're down 27 points, you're a second you know, rate defensive back. You make a basic tackle, tackle, you get up, jump around and you're doing your little dance. That's annoying. I don't care whether you're black or white or, or orange. But if you've got the goods and you have proven that you are a leader, that your team loves you, that you can win. What the hell do I care if he dances? Yeah, you're, you're right. I agree with you a thousand percent. Um, let, let, let's play a little game here. You take I like him. It. Let's take Cam Newton, take him off of the Panthers. Okay. And let's say you put let's say you put Aaron Rodgers. Yep. Who I think is one of the top five quarterbacks in the league. First sure. without how far do you think they go this year? Who's coaching? If we're saying Ron Rivera's coaching every, that team? Everything else say everything else is the same except the quarterbacks. I think they're a thirteen and three team, probably not a fifteen and one team. Um, I, I still think they might be in the Super Bowl. I'm not saying that Cam Newton isn't better than Aaron Rodgers this year. I think he is. But the path that Carolina took, um, yeah. you know, Ro Rodgers can make plays happen. You know, now if yeah. you take a guy who can't make plays happen, who has to stand in the pocket, who who is, you know, a Brady almost, um, mm -hmm. a Manning, I think they're a much worse team. You, you just happen to pick a guy who can do stuff with his feet and who can throw yeah. on the run. And so, so that, Aaron you know. Well, Aaron Rodgers is realistically probably the only other person that you can put up in a comparison to Cam Newton yeah. because the only he's the only guy that's got the arm in comparison and can still do things with his feet, like you said. The yeah. problem, the problem that a lot of people are having is something that's been playing the NFL for a number of years. You can be one of two things, but you can't be both. You can be cocky, but you can't be black. And unfortunately, that's what's coming out and it's it's what's being noticed by everyone because it's in a skill position which we're not used to seeing this normally we're used to seeing the cocky cornerback or wide receiver a la Deion sanders you know these guys but right. it's never there really hasn't been a black quarterback that's had that swagger which i hate that word but He's he's basically walking the walking it talking it, and he's selling the stroke, yep. and everybody's there's and nobody unfortunately the way the media is now everyone has to have something that they that they got to paint negative about him because the guy's got the looks I mean dude you and you and I are both two pretty good looking dudes 
and well, neither one you, of sir. us would bat an eye if someone said you have to trade with Cam Newton for a day. No, like, sir. Yeah, like I get to be you know a few inches taller, a few extra million dollars in my pocket, and you know get get a body like that. And dude, I haven't had a six pack like that since uh, lunch. Sure. But yeah. you know, <laughs> but yeah, and and I, you know what? And it's sad. I I would think that that we've all grown and matured as people, and especially with things of social media and whatnot. But unfortunately, the one thing social social media does it allows everyone to have a voice. No matter how ignorant or stupid your voice may be, right. it does give you a voice and it allows you to spew whatever venom to the public, to whatever uh, celebrity it may be. And it bring, you know, it comes up with this stuff. But we should be celebrating this guy because, one, how often do you get to see a guy that was a number one pick for a quarterback that actually pans out and makes it to right. the big shit? And, right. and, do- and is legitimately skilled. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's, dude, he's everything, you know, if you're, if you're drafting him first, he is everything you want him to be. He has come through. He has grown. He has matured. He's become a leader. He's a winner. You know, you, you can't ask for more from your quarterback and he's got you in the Super Bowl in his fifth year. Yeah. You, you see I mean, that, that is as good as it gets for a number one draft for any draft pick. But, but if you are going to put your franchise in somebody's hands, Cam Newton, as good as it gets any time recently, he is better than most. Uh, and, and look, he's just figuring it out. How good is this going to be, guy going to be next year when they have the confidence, especially, by the way, if they win? If they well, win, this is going to be a whole different player weapons. next year. Especially if right. they have guys that are actually weapons. I mean, you have a wide – I mean, he's going to get Benjamin back. You get a yep. six four wide receiver that can actually catch the ball. He's got decent speed and, you know, he's got a decent level of athleticism. People forget well, that he's doing and, this. And don't forget, they'll have, they'll have Funches too, right? So I know he didn't have the best rookie year, but he's still young. And sometimes yeah. it takes these guys some time to really, you know, figure it out. Oh, they, um, they've got a lot to build on. I mean, that's, yeah. what's, that's what makes this team really scary is that they're this good and they're only going to get better. I right. mean, they've got a lot of their guys sewn up contractually wise on good, you know, decent level contracts. Uh, nobody's making ridiculous money, but nobody is going broke to stay there. And I believe they still have Cam under contract for another three seasons, two or three. I'd have to look at that. I'm not sure off the top of my head, but, but he's certainly that, you know, he ain't going anywhere. That's for sure. Yeah. I know. He, I know he's not on his rookie contract anymore. And I know he did one extension. So, I mean, they're Carolina's looking pretty good. I mean, like you said, how many how many number one picks, let alone great quarterbacks, regardless of where they pick, can we say that have gotten to the Super Bowl in their first five years? And you know he's improved. He's shown improvement every year. Yeah. So so Cam Cam signed the uh, the big uh, contract extension in 2015. Um, you know, 118 million bucks, which is starting to look like a steal. Yeah. Especially when you got guys like Eli Manning sucking up fourteen million a year for you know for mediocrity. I mean, there it is. We were wondering when it would come up. By the way, if you, if you haven't uh, checked out the Fanzeal Sports Weekend Review or the Quick Buzz and and all the stuff Brandon and I've been doing all year, uh, it is a rule of thumb that at some point Eli Manning will come up in conversation, and yes. Brandon Boykin will be pretty unhappy about it. And I'm glad that we were able to uh, to continue that all throughout the entire season. My, my goal for you, my friend, is as we get into baseball season, as we get into the NCAA March Madness, and as we get into uh, some of the more, uh, you know, as we get further and further away from football, uh, in between now and the draft, and then, you know, really from the draft to, to minicamp, I'd like to see you try to get Eli in at least two of these a month, right? I think that's a fair assessment. Uh, I think you can do it. I have, I have faith. Uh, I don't see any reason you couldn't do it. And so so I, I applaud your... Your anti Eliness, uh, and he will be the only Manning in the league uh, after this weekend. Now, now we've got about uh, we got some time left, so we got some topics we want to touch upon. But we're here Friday Super Bowl. Uh, Fanzil did not go to Radio Row this year. We we made the choice not to, and for no other reason than you know we we've been to a couple. A couple of the guys on staff have been there, and we just thought we we don't want to do what everybody else is doing. So so we stayed home. 
Uh, we're doing blasts. We've done some write-ups. And, and if you go to fanzeal.com and sign up for the Zeal, the funniest uh, newsletter in sports, it comes out every Monday morning. And now we, uh, we, we've come to an agreement with the folks at The Kicker, uh, which if you have not checked out, is a historically funny uh, sports website. And The Kicker is going to be uh, sharing some of our content and us theirs. And I think that you'll, you'll continue to get laughs from the best in sports. But as we are less than uh, 48 hours away from the game kicking off, as there have been no reported problems in San Francisco, one practice squad issue, no big deal. Uh, everybody looks like they're going to play for Carolina. Thomas Davis is in. Uh, Jared Allen's in. And it looks like Denver will be at, at mostly full strength, you know, where they need to be. A couple nagging injuries, but it's late in the season. How do you like these teams stacking up? How, how, how big of a gap in the score, in the final score, do you see cover? Um. I don't think there's going to be a very high-scoring game if defenses dictate uh, pace like I think they are. Uh, I think we're looking at about a 10-point um, difference in score. Uh, I've, I've been calling for I think the score is going to be something in the realm of a 24-14. to 14. Um, if, both, if both defenses play to their potential and the game, the game shakes out the way that I think it will be, if it's pretty much a clean game. Um, nobody's going to run away with this. Um, I do expect Carolina to try to jump on them early um, just to really kind of take some of the wind out of their sails. Um, and it, a lot of it is going to be determined about uh, by, the, by the line, uh, whose offensive line is going to play better and protect their quarterback and whose defensive line is going to be the most active. Um, do I expect Denver to, to roll over and play Patsy? No. Do I expect them to get – uh, get to Cam the way that they did to New England. Uh, no shot, and no no shot. Um, one, there's no way you can blitz Carolina that same way. If you do that, then we're looking at Cam Newton setting a new Super Bowl record for like yeah. 200 yeah. yards rushing and like 150 yards throwing. And you know it's going to look like that uh, that uh, what was that the USC Texas game when Vince Young demolished the USC team and. Apparently, everyone in the arena knew that he was going to run it except for Pete Carroll. So, yeah, if, if I, I hope Denver is paying attention to things like that. And, and I'm sure they've got their scout teams and they're trying to, you know, play Cam as much for the run as you can. And, but, I mean, the dude is 6'5", 250. He is a beast of a man, especially for a quarterback. I mean, dude, this guy's as big as a, as a lot of their linebackers. So Bigger. Bigger. Yeah. Bigger than some. And, you know, the one advantage that I do think that Denver has, their secondary is a bit stronger overall as far as with overall talent. Um, I do think Carolina has a couple of good guys in their secondary, but I just don't see them being as strong. But on the flip side of that, I think Carolina's linebacker core is a much stronger and much more um, much more diverse they can do like they can jump back into coverage. They can blitz on you. They can play the run. Um, they they don't have to put eight in the box to stop the run. Right. And Denver doesn't really have that much of a running game. If Denver if Denver's running game resembles anything like it did in that New England game, they have no shot because there's no way that you can you can run and get get less than a hundred yards on a team like Carolina if you want a chance of beating them. I mean, you've got to have something because otherwise it. The guys are just going to sit back, pin their ears back, and just go at, at uh, Manning all day. And at some point, they're going to hit him. Right. And they're going to hit him hard. And well, I think that's where, you know, one of the things you've seen late in the season is Denver, Denver's receivers have not really helped out. There have been some clutch third downs late in the day, you know, late in the game. You're sitting there, you're looking at a little slant, a little curl, just something to move the chains. It's right in their hands, and these guys are dropping. I mean, they're just yeah. dropping balls, and you can't do that in this game. You simply cannot risk a situation where Carolina's, you know, got you in, in third and six, third and seven, and you have the slant, and you just don't catch it. Because, one of you, you know, so you just brought up something really interesting with pinning their ears back and going uh, from, from the, the Carolina side of things. That's, you know, one of the concerns I have, and I was talking about this last night with somebody who knows the game pretty well, the contain. Uh, situation for for the defensive, you know, outside linemen uh, of Denver is normally these guys are rushing at the quarterback. I mean, close the pocket, you know, get in there fast, 
you know, keep him from, from stepping up, come through, come to the front, come to the side. If they don't come upfield and find a way to contain that outside, and if they continue to do this, this kind of looping rush, Cam's going to take off. You know, yeah. he, he's looking to throw first. That's the way he plays the game. But Cam, you can't – if you come eight either too far upfield or you don't keep contain on the outside, this is where I think you're going to run into a lot of problems. And so I think that it's going to be a very interesting defensive chess match. I, I've looked at Carolina, and, and, you know, I think we all doubted them a pretty good portion of the year, even when they were undefeated, 10-0, and 11-0, and, you know, oh, they played a weak schedule, another one. Look, you can only you – know, football cliche number one for today, by the way. You can only beat the guys on your schedule, and they did that handily. They crushed everybody. Then they started getting into some good teams, and they started beating the crap out of those guys. And so – my my gut is telling me that Carolina's got 35 points in them. But I just don't see how you put that up against the Denver defense. right? I, I can't figure out how that defense – but then again, I never would have thought Seattle would be able to put up 40-something a couple years ago. So in different teams, different coaches, different players. I don't want to undersell that. But is this the time that the Denver defense doesn't show up? Because if anybody has the ability to make them do that, it's, it's the Panthers. Yeah. Um... Look at the path, the the route that the that the Panthers have taken to get here. They they beat two solid, very solid teams quite handily. Um, they, you know, if if we want to talk about, you know, yes, yeah, Seattle came back on them. Seattle still lost the game. I mean, yep. at, at at some point, you got to think Carolina. They kind of pulled their foot off the pedal because they were. They, it, they took them to the shed in the first half of that game, and it was it was not even close. Now, Seattle did come back, and mind you, Seattle's been to the Super Bowl twice. Same team. They're still the same. It's the same team out there. So right. they came back, and, and Carolina withstood that. Um, that being said, they beat a former champion. Then they beat they go out, and they beat a team like Arizona. A team that a lot of which, people thought was pretty much was the best. Yep, was the best in the league for sure. Yeah, um, I, they, I was one of those people, and I I look at Arizona and I look at Denver because to me they're both very similar teams. Um, Palmer obviously is a little bit more mobile than Manning, but who isn't? Right. And that's not really saying much. But he's got an arm, and he can he knows how to pick his spots with the defense. Carolina made him look really, really bad in that first half. And they had him playing and, and making throws that he knows that he shouldn't have made. He knows that those were spots that he, right. he wasn't going to be able to hit. And Palmer has much more arm left than Manning does. Manning oh, throws that duck out there. For sure. And those, and those guys, because those guys are swarming around the ball like crazy. They know how to tackle. You don't break off big plays on them. That – that's the thing with Denver this year. They their defense has been dictating their their pace and their schemes have been allowing them to score points when necessary, but their offense has not been a juggernaut uh, to where anyone has been afraid of. They're not uh, hitting you with these quick points. Carolina can they can put fifteen points on you in the first you know in the first quarter, and you still got eight minutes left, and you're looking at your team like what just happened to us. Because you just ran into this buzzsaw, and they're making these quick plays. Now, mind you, Ted Ginn, who is a solid receiver, the guy is quick as he's quick as a hiccup. But mm -hmm. if the wind blows or if he blinks wrong, the dude's going to drop the ball. But he's been making some plays for them. Uh, Jones, uh, I believe, is the other receiver. Uh, I, I could be Billy Jones. Jones. Billy Brown. Billy Brown. Brown. Sorry. Um, another guy making some big plays and these aren't everyday names, but these are guys that are stepping up because pretty much they have no one else. Uh, right. Greg Wilson can only do so much. And remember, this is a guy that they got from Chicago, stupid trade on their end. And I mean, he's making the best of every, of all of his, of, of his playing time. The guy he's getting out there, you know, he's doing what's, what's necessary, but Cam is also seeing that, hey, they're going to leave this guy, give me a spot for him. Hey, I'm going to give right. him the ball. So the guy's playing hard. They're playing hard for each other. So, it, you know, it, it's 
I think it'll be a good game. Um, I don't think it'll be a blowout by any means, but I, I definitely think Carolina's got some uh, some advantages. Um, and and it's not to say that Denver doesn't have a chance. I mean, if Demarcus Marcus Ware and Von Miller, these guys could play lights out, and and we could be looking at a first half ten uh, zero Denver game, and everyone could be in complete shock. That well, that's I'm, not I'm a pretty, right. possibility. So, so so you've got Peyton Manning in his last ever game, right? He knows it. Everybody knows it, right? This is it. You, you, the, this, by the way, by the way, football cliche number two coming your way. He's going to leave it all on the field, right? Which means you got the <laughs> smartest, and 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 you and I have a disagreement about where he ranks on the all timers. But I think we'd agree he's one of the smartest quarterbacks we've yes. ever seen. I and mean, this guy didn't. He doesn't need an offensive coordinator. He could game plan the entire thing himself. You know, th- that guy's there on suggestion. He's he's just a brilliant football mind. Yes. Knowing this is his last game, knowing everything he's learned over the 906 years he's been a quarterback, or so it feels like, isn't it possible that he knows exactly where his limitations are and he defies the odds by just playing so much smarter than the Carolina Panthers defense is expecting? That's a possibility, but it's also a possibility that you and I are going to win the Powerball. Um, I have a ticket. It's not unheard of. <laughs> it's not unheard of. Um, the problem that I have with that is that we all see his limitations. Yeah. His his body is giving out on him. His arm is giving out on him. Um, the smarts are there, but the skills are not present. And unfortunately, ability is going to be the main thing that's going to drive everything. The best ability to have is availability, which he hasn't had that all year. He the he missed a few weeks, which may come back to actually be beneficial to him, and you know having this two weeks off, but it's still going to be a game of physicality. If right. he starts to get nervous back there and he cannot make those out throws, if they uh, Carolina knows exactly what they want to force him to do. He's if he was smart, in my estimation, he would they would run their offense something similar to. What New England does, the little short seven-yard passes yep. here and there, let your receivers do the work for you because that's what his arm can dictate. His arm can't throw a 15, 25-yard out pattern with the zip on it that he's going to need. Because That's true, gotta- that's true. but I'm going to cut you there because I'm going to guarantee this. In the first 10 plays of the game, he throws at least one ball over 30 yards and at least one ball 20. Because they're gonna show they're gonna show Carolina, and maybe the only time all game they do it, but that you gotta think, okay, I can't throw fifty, but if you let our guys get behind you, I'll throw it thirty. If my guys yeah. get a step on you, I can still throw it thirty yards, and and they're gonna make sure they do that early. And we could we could even well, play like Brandon Justin Bingo when that happens, you know. But it, it's gonna happen. Oh, they're if if they're smart, they I mean they have to. If if you don't do that, then you're you know you're kind of you're going to put yourself in a bottle. Um, that being said, I think Carolina is going to prepare for that, and they're going to have somebody back there spying, um, kind of waiting on it. You know, I'm, I'm sure they've watched as many tapes as they can on Peyton uh, this last few weeks, and they don't. I'm sure the players on the defensive side, none of them want to even hear the word Omaha anymore because I'm sure they they're yeah, sick of hearing. It's interesting. It would not surprise me if Peyton, knowing Peyton, went back and pulled some of the plays he used in Indianapolis uh, early in his career and said, okay, guys, you know, we've got two weeks to prepare. Here's stuff they've never seen because they're not looking at my tape from year four, you know, in a non-playoff game against the Titans or against, you know, the, or, you know Houston. They're just not looking at those, those tapes. So here's a play that I think can work. But, but you know why they're not looking at those, though? Because Peyton can't do what he did in year four. He doesn't have that arm anymore. Peyton doesn't have the arm that he had five years ago. Sure, I'll which, give you that. So it's, you know, part of it, they're playing on his ego as a quarterback and knowing what he can and can't do, knowing if he can thread that needle or if he can fit that ball into these seams. And they kind of they're kind of daring him in my opinion, to say, okay, yeah, we're going to go ahead and let you give some of your receivers a little bit of cushion on these plays, 
because we don't think that you can beat us making that throw. So we're going to, you're going to have to show us you can make that throw before we're going to commit and change perhaps our defensive pressure on the outside or what have you. Um, that, that's what I think is going to be the main thing for the game. If, if he plays, you know, short and consistent game, are they going to put up 35 points? Doubt it. But will he, will he probably not throw any picks? He'll probably play a much cleaner game. I think they can they can win with him throwing the ball 35 times, let's say going for 275 yards, you know, at a at a clip of about 70% completion rate. They can win. That game is very winnable for them if their defense is is up to snuff. Um, you know, it's interesting you said you said the no picks. I, I kind of feel like sometimes you get these Super Bowl games. And you know it's going to be off to the races, right? You know these guys are just going to do boom, boom, boom. It was almost felt that way with, with New England and Seattle, right? Mm-hmm. This one feels like a chess match to me. And, and I think it's, it's partly because the defenses are so good for both teams and so versatile that you can't just go in and assume, okay, we've got this covered. Uh, and, and I just I, – I don't see a lot of turnovers happening. I don't see a lot of stupid throws. I don't see a lot of forced plays. I, I just I, – this feels like a smart game to me. Uh, I think that people are going to really see how smart Cam Newton is. I think people are going to see how smart that defense is uh, on Carolina. And, and obviously, you know, if, if you've watched the Wade Phillips defense at all this year, these guys are coming at you from everywhere. They disguise everything, you know. Yeah. And they'll, they'll send four. They have no issues just sending four because they believe in their guys. So – you know, it's, it's going to be interesting. And we've, we've got we've got two minutes for a shift topics here. So so I'm going to say that uh, I want everybody to go to fanzeal.com, sign up for the, the Zeal, the funniest newsletter in sports. On Monday morning, we will be recapping uh, our favorite commercials, which is, is going to lead me into our next question. Uh, and, and Kevin Hart's uh, uh, Hyundai commercial has already been released. It's, it's pretty funny. Uh, his daughter is going on a date, and, and Kevin Hart uses his, uh, his Hyundai tracking to make sure that uh, things do not go awry with this this uh, precocious young man, as he turns out to be a very confident young man. So, Brandon, I'm putting you on the spot. Uh, final choice before the game in, in, in less than 48 hours, Carolina, Denver, Super Bowl 50, Northern California, where we're going to hope the turf holds up. <laughs> we've been thinking about it all week. We've looked at the ups and downs. We've looked at the health reports. We've looked at some of the matchups. Um, it, these are two very, very good teams. Does Peyton Manning go out a winner, or does Cam Newton start to cement his legacy at the age of 25? I will say this. How, and, and what is your final score? Um, final score, I'm going to go with um, 27-14. Okay. 27-14, Carolina. Um, I think it's really going to come down to the first defense to score a touchdown is going to be the winner. Now, I think both I think both teams defensively can score, but I think the first one, um, I there's a good chance we may see a pick six, fumble, something like that. Like you said, I think it's general. It generally should be a, a clean game because these are two teams that protect the ball pretty well. But these defense, both of these teams' defenses are flying around with their heads on fire. So somebody's going to be a playmaker, and they're going to make something happen. Um, I could I could see Cam rushing for one, um, throwing for a couple. Um, there's, I think it'll be close. It, it's, it may be closer than the score dictates, but, um, yeah. That, All right, well, you are that. locked in at 27-14 Carolina. We've just tweeted it out. Uh, I'm at Justin Simon. He is at underscore B Boykin. We are working here for Fanzio on the weekend or on, on this Friday. Cochet number three. Three. And by the way, I need to self-correct. Uh, I've been saying Cam Newton is 25. He's 26. Uh, my apologies. I, I got that wrong. But but Cochet number three. Defenses win championships. And the Denver Broncos were the best defense of the year and they go in as the best defense. And so the cliche football mind in me says you never bet against the best defense. But I just don't see how you stop Cam Newton. I just, the, the, he's the MVP. 
the year he has had, the confidence he's going in with, the skill set he brings. If Cam Newton finishes that game, if Cam Newton plays 60 minutes, I'm going 35-21 Den- uh, Carolina. Hard, I, I really I want to pick Denver. I do. I just – there's something about the way Cam Newton has just controlled this entire season that I just have faith that he's going to find a way to figure out this Denver defense or at least keep them enough on their heels. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tweet my pick right now. What did I go? 34-21 is what I just said. 34-21. Yes, Carolina, which I think Vegas would be very happy if that was the outcome. Yes. Uh, Gonna gonna fix this tweet. The beauty of blabbing is you can you can live tweet in the middle of it, uh, and I'm doing that as we speak. All right, and I actually just referred to myself uh, in the third person. All right, we got uh, we got at Slugworth. Slugworth just joined. Uh, we like your prediction. He says special teams and a couple of turnovers keep it close to the end. Uh, who do you think uh, uh, you know has the special teams advantage? And 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 Slugworth, who are you picking? And we'll bring that in, in a, you know, as he, as he answers that. Brandon, the game is important. The buildup is important. The commercials, though. The commercials. <laughs> and, and Slugworth is piped in. He's got Cam by a touchdown. So the three of us are in agreement. We appreciate you, you popping in. And, and we're going to want you to, to weigh in here on that chat box, too, uh, or tweet us at Fanzio. The commercials are going for four and a half to $5 million this year. The Kevin Hart Hyundai commercial has already come out. There's been a domestic violence uh, commercial that already came out, which is actually a, a, a fascinating uh, one minute long ad, basically where a woman is calling a, a, a pizza shop and saying, you know, in essence, finding a way to report an emergency and, and talking about, you know, how people can't really make that call because they're, they're abused. And it's a very uh, impactful PSA. The, 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 commercials are going to be what everybody talks about. Why? Because there are a lot of people who don't like football. Uh, some wives, some girlfriends, some brothers, some cousins. You know, it is not just a female thing. Uh, as you know, in, in my household, she is going to be more likely to be on the couch watching football than I am half the time. So <laughs> it's about the commercials. How many animals do you think we can expect this year? And are there any brands that historically have done a great job on Super commercial, Super Bowl commercials that you'd really like to see them raise their bar? Um, Budweiser always comes with the, the, you know, like there's, it's always pretty much the same group. Budweiser, uh, Pepsi, Coke, um, yep. who else? You know, McDonald's every now and then has a decent commercial. Um course we've all been privy to the wonderful godaddy.com commercials which most folks still don't remember pretty much know what they do but they know the commercial right. um and another which i'm a little biased um uh, doritos which if you remember my wonderful doritos commercial which didn't get any airtime to super bowl last year but you know whatever i'm still a little upset about that but doritos Doritos is actually normally one of my favorites because they always come with something uh, pretty fresh. Um, they always take a nice little angle. They usually do something with the kids or an animal. Um, so they usually have a pretty good angle on things. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what celebrities pop up on a lot of these. It's so, uh, you know, talk about leading me into my next point. So, so here's some of the celebrities that you will see in different ads uh, throughout the commercials, you will have Amy Schumer and Seth Rogen, uh, Paul Rudd, Helen Mirren, uh, Steven Tyler from Aerosmith, and what will scare the hell out of a lot of people, uh, William Willem Dafoe, uh, dressed in a dress. I will, I will wait until you get to see that. Um, Alec Baldwin will be in a commercial. Um, you, you've got, uh, let's see, who else we got here? Uh, Snickers is buying in big, Skittles is buying in big, Coke, Pepsi, Mountain Dew, Doritos, uh, Bud Light, of course. And, of course, anything that happens with Bud Light and Amy Schumer could just be unbelievably brilliant. Yes. Uh, uh, I was waiting on that one. Um, Key and Peel are going to be uh, showing up in one. Kevin Hart, obviously, we talked about, and I have a feeling there's going to be another uh, another situation there. 
Um, Audi went, uh, Audi went and, and, and used David Bowie's song. KFC is announcing a new uh, Colonel. Uh, oh, maybe we'll get fried. Another one? Yeah, apparently there's some sort of, I don't know. I mean, Norm McDonald's not been great. Uh, Ryan Reynolds will be in there. Uh, Little Wayne, uh, Little Wayne will be there. Wow, that really? was the whitest. That, that was the whitest thing I've said this week. Um, <laughs> Can you just I'm say not, Wheezy for me? I mean, I, I think you just revoked my card that you gave me a while ago. That was just awful. Uh, <laughs> Shock tops getting in. Uh, can, can you say Tunchy for me once? What, what do you need me to say? Tunchy. Yeah, I, I'm not even sure what that word means. I'm, I'm feeling that's particularly a, Caucasian right now. Uh, that's just a little Tunchy. Terrell <laughs> <laughs> uh, Owens, Harvey Keitel, and somebody named TJ Miller, who I don't know who that is, and Serena Williams. So, Woo, Serena. Serena's in, Ronda Rousey's in. You know, look, they're bringing out the star power. Uh, it's the Super Bowl. The biggest names, the biggest ads, the biggest budgets because you get the biggest audience. So, I, you know, what I hate seeing is when they bring the celebrities in and give them a crap commercial. You've got these talent. You've got these really talented people. Give them something good. Um, at Fanzio, by the way, this weekend we will be live tweeting some of the commercials. So if there's something that you see and you want to talk about, hit us up. Uh, make sure that, uh, you know, you bring it to our attention. Uh, talk smack about it if you hated it. Talk, you know, if you, if you loved it, let's get on there and point that out. But I think that that the Super Bowl commercials are are where it's at. And the the next most important thing is the food, and and the food is where you know we we make our our, our living, and by that I mean we get fat and happy. Uh, so with the with the three or four minutes we have left in today's blab, Brandon. Uh, by the way, what are what are you doing for Super Bowl? You and I really haven't touched base on that. Uh, what what are your plans, my man? Um, I planned on passing out on someone's couch and eating some hot wings because, um, you know, now I'm back on the, the eating train again. Uh, right, right. Yeah, since, yeah. yeah, since some of our fans didn't get to see me in my in all my Kanye West glory uh, through the wire, uh, your boy hasn't been able to really eat much solid food. I've been, yep. been doing the Jamba thing. Um, so I, I plan on getting a nice plate of wings in front of me. You know, you have to when you say wings, you have to kind of sing it. But uh, wings, wings, and adult beverages, and all that good adult stuff. Beverages. Well, you and I haven't talked, but of course, you have an open invite down to our place for we're keeping it chill. Uh, just a handful of people, but uh, you know, my my girl will be cooking, so you know how that's going to go. And oh. uh, you know, you and I can talk about that tonight when we see each other later on. When we're having some cocktails on a Friday night. That's for right, me, baby. I'm I'm looking forward to uh, I know that, that we are getting sweet potato fries with a cinnamon sugar dipping sauce. Uh, that's coming our way for sure. There is a, a make your own boneless wing station going to be set up in the house. And mind you, we're going to have less than 10 people, but that's just kind of how we roll. Uh, we restock to the bar. We'll have the grill going, uh, potentially sliders which will be delicious uh, for the vegetarians. There will be a, you know, a veggie tray. Cause that's all I really feel the need to give you. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and, and potentially, uh, potentially mini steak sandwiches. So, uh, so it could be, could be good eating at the Simon uh, house this weekend. And, and hopefully uh, you and I'll chat later and we'll see if uh, you'll swing on down for that. Cause I think we'll have a good time. I may have to do that. All right. Well, it's been a great Super Bowl week here. Uh, we will probably check in with you on Twitter on Sunday. We will be back next week. Uh, make sure you go sign up for uh, the Zeal at fanzeal.com. It's going to come out Monday, and it's going to be funny because we're breaking down all the commercials. And we've got some really talented people on our staff, very sarcastic, very witty, and it'll be a pleasure to see what they come up with. So thank you for stopping in. That is my man, Brandon Boykin. I am Justin Simon. We're here for Fanzio. Have a great Super Bowl, everybody. Remember, eat, drink, get home safely, use Uber, use Lyft. Uh, no reason to drive after, after you've been drinking. Um, and let's hope for a good game and great commercials because I think uh, we could use one. Yes, yes, we can. And we are done here. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. We've had a great week, and we look forward to seeing you next Friday.